today we will start the new unit that is ecology. In this, the first chapter, that chapter number 13 is organism and population. In this chapter, we will study what is ecology. Ecology is the study of environment as well as the organism. How they, that is the both uh, abiotic and biotic component are interacting with each other. How they are responding towards each other. How uh, there are different types of adaptations in organism to adapt with or to survive in that particular environment, to cope up with that stressful condition of that environment. All these things will study. The term ecology was first given by Ernst Hickel in 1866. This ecology concerned with four levels that is organism, population, community and biome. Single organism, when it is single organism and then the population, that particular group that is species, that group of organism that is species is known as population. For example, tiger population or deer population. Then different population will constitute community and different community will constitute a biome. So in this way, all of these are related. Then there are two types of components in uh, this ecology that is abiotic and biotic. Biotic components are all the living organisms including plant, then microorganism, predators, parasites, different types of pathogen, etc. Whereas abiotic components are the physiochemical environment that is non-living thing like temperature, water, light, soil, then attitude, latitude, distance from the sea, distance from the mountain, humidity, all the precipitation, all these things will be the abiotic component of that environment. So all of these, that is there is interaction between the biotic and abiotic component or uh, interaction between among the biotic components all will be here and they constitute the ecosystem. Now niche, the organism has defined range in which the organism live, utilize the resources and play their uh, role in that particular environment is known as the niche of that organism. Now we'll study how the these abiotic components are affecting the biotic components one by one. Now we will discuss about different major components, abiotic components which affect the distribution of the biotic organism that is biotic factors all the living organism as well as plants. The major abiotic factor is temperature, water, soil, light etc. So first we will discuss with temperature. Temperature is not same at different places on this earth or water. They are different at different places like when we will move from polar area, polar region to the equator then the temperature will increase or if we are moving from plain to mountain thing, it will decrease. So in this way we can see the temperature is not similar at different places. It can range from uh, 0 degree centigrade like in polar area or high altitude to uh, the northern that uh, more than 50 degree centigrade in the tropical desert. So because temperature is not same at different places and there are two types of organisms that is urethermal and stenothermal. Urethermal organisms are those which can tolerate very wide range of temperature. They can survive in wide range of temperature whereas stenothermal will not survive in wide range of temperature. So depending upon their nature, they can't be distributed, all the organisms can't be distributed in every area. So the temperature will decide the range of distribution in different area of the earth. Now the second major component is water which is also very important factor. Water, our, our protoplasm of the cell is about 85 to 90 percent water. So water is required for different metabolic activities, enzymatic activities, etc. And it is also uh, necessary for the survival of the living beings. So water is very important and 
the type of water that means what is the ph value of water uh, the composition chemical composition of water then salinity that is salt concentration all will decide the distribution of the organism now salinity is about 5 or uh, less than 5 in the land but then in sea it is about 30 to 35 in uh, some lagoons about 100 that means salinity will also differing at different places so that's why the organisms will also be distributed in different area different type of organism will be there organisms are also divided into two types that is stenohaline and urehaline depending upon how much salinity they can tolerate now the third light uh, component is light light is one of the main or uh, important factor which will decide the distribution of the organism the requirement of light is light is very necessary that for the process of photosynthesis it is the uh, source for living all the living organism that means the, all the green plants require light for the process of photosynthesis and then they will prepare the food for all the consumers all the living uh, organism which are in the consumer level they will require this food and they will depend upon the photosynthetic process now light is also necessary for the growth development reproduction different activities so well, uh, but the light the light is also of different type having different intensity then duration of the light then quality of light the photo period how much period the light is available then uh, different types of ultraviolet radiation so all are different types of, of light that is light intensity quality intensity photo period all these things will decide the distribution of the organism as well as plant the ultraviolet radiation is harmful for some organism, plants having different types of lethal effect also. Now, power radiation that is photosynthetically active radiation is about 400 nm to 700 nm of the light spectrum. So, we can see that how the light is deciding the distribution of organism as well as plant in different locality, in different area. Depending upon the photo period, there are three types of plants, long day plant, short day plant and day neutral plant. Long day plants are those plants which require the day length more for flowering, that is more than the critical length of the day. Whereas the short day plant which will require short day, that is less photo period for their flowering and the day neutral plants are not dependent on the duration of the light. Next abiotic factor which affect the distribution of organism and plant is the soil that is the nature of and composition of the soil like from uh, their withering process, the, what is the mineral composition, the pH of the soil, water holding capacity of the soil, the granal size of the soil, all these things, topography, all these things will decide the distribution of organism and plant. Some of the organisms in aquatic condition some are light loving which will uh, be present at the uh, that uh, level the upper level of the pond whereas the benthic organism will live at the bottom of the pond so there are we can see different types of abiotic components like temperature water light soil then humidity humidity precipitation distance from the sea distance from the mountain or latitude attitude all these things will decide the distribution of biotic component now we will study about the biotic factors and their adaptations etc slide we can see the introduction of ecology that is the term in uh, this ecology was given by the german biologist named Haeckel in 1869 this our uh, meaning of this greek word is oikos that is house or habitat and living means lo, uh, to study. Now ecology is the study of the interrelationship of different organisms as well as their interaction with the environment in which they live. The study of relationship between living organism and between organism and their environment 
is collectively known as ecosystem. Now this organism, a group of organism will constitute a population in that particular area at particular time and a group of population will constitute a community. Now this community uh, live in a particular area in which they flourish that is known as habitat and all of these organisms interact with each other that is known as the biotic component as well as they also interact with the abiotic component of that area. This slide is showing this is the ecosystem, the abiotic factors of the ecosystem that is sunlight, temperature, precipitation, water, moisture, soil. Then biotic components are the primary producer that is the green plants, then herbivores that is the primary consumer, then car carnivores or omnivore detrivores that means different level of consumer and abiotic and abiotic factors are collectively constituting the ecosystem. There is a relationship between these two that means they depend upon each other and influence each other. For example, the temperature of the water will affect the survival of coral. Similarly, fish excrete nitrogen waste into the pond and that will increase the nitrate level. In this way, both of them are influencing each other. These are the abiotic components that is pH level, humidity, temperature, topography as that is uh, topography includes that altitude, then gradient, slope, aspect, then light intensity, microclimate. So these are the abiotic components and both of them that is abiotic and biotic will influence each other. This diagram is also showing the interaction between these two components. So, biotic and abiotic components are here we can see that biotic includes organic matter, living thing, oyster, blue crabs, chew plankton, phytoplankton, jellyfish. Then abiotic component, the climate, non-living things, sunlight, temperature, nutrient enrichment, humidity, soil, etc. So, here also this is the relationship between these abiotic components that is chemicals, different type of chemicals, carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, minerals. Then this is the producer, they are trapping the solar energy and producing uh, the food for other consumers that is consumers are herbivores and carnivores. Then they after their death and decay, the decomposers like bacteria, fungus will uh, decompose them. At each level this heat is released and escaped in the environment and in this way they are linked with each other. Now the biotic components like food availability, competition, disease, parasite and plants. So all of the biotic components also influence each other and they interact with each other. Abiotic components like temperature of the air or water, then climate in like uh, rainfall, humidity, wind, etc. Then sunlight, the intensity of sunlight, uh, then uh, uh, length of the day and night, then availability of the oxygen uh, that is required for the process of respiration, then pH and salinity that is salt uh, concentration, all these things will affect the distribution of the organism as well as plants. Now we will start response of biotic factors towards abiotic factors, how the living organism or the biotic factor or the component will respond towards that particular abiotic condition like high temperature or some other thing or cold temperature or less light, dark light. Then there are four methods for regulating with First is to cope up with the stressful condition, to survive in the stressful opposite type of condition at uh, that unfavorable condition. There are, first is these are regulate, to regulate their bodies, then conform or to migrate or to suspend their body activities. Now, first is regulate. The organism, some of the organisms have the capacity to maintain homeostasis by different method that is different physiological method or behavioral method that is temperature as well as pH of the body fluid. Now some of the examples
examples are birds, mammals, some lower invertebrates. They, uh, for, for example, mammal, human, our body temperature is about 37 degree centigrade. So during summer, uh, because the environmental uh, temperature is more than the body temperature, then the sweating occurs and then it will maintain the body temperature, it will give the cooling effect also. But during uh, winter season, when the external temperature is lower than 37 degree centigrade, to maintain the body temperature, shivering occurs. So in this way, the organisms maintain their homeostasis by different methods. The second uh, response is confirm that some of the organisms have not this uh, capacity. Maximum about 99% animal as well as all the plants have cannot maintain their constant body temperature along with the environmental condition, external environment and these are known as conforms. The third method is to migrate. When the uh, some of the organisms migrate from one place to other to cope up with that changing temperature, they, for example, from the northern region where extreme cold is there, from that area, Siberian grain and other different types of birds are moving, migrating from that area to our country that is um, that Bharatpur National Park and Kerado National Park and in this way we can see they maintain their, they migrate from one place to other to cope up with that stressful condition, extreme cold condition. The fourth method is suspend. Some of the organisms suspend their body temperature, the activity, then the metabolism for some time to cope up with that stressful condition. For example, some bacteria, fungi, some lower uh, plants also, they form, they synthesize spores. These spores have thick walled outside to cope up with the environmental condition, to, uh, min, uh, to uh, st uh, that unfavorable condition can we cope up with that and on commencement of the favorable condition that outer layer will burst out and the spores will come out. In the higher plants seeds are formed which will undergo the process of dormancy and in the favorable condition they will germinate. Then some of the organ animals also show different types of method that is estivation, hibernation etc. In estivation that is also known as long summer sleep and Hibernation that is long winter sleep. For example, some of the amphibians undergoes the process of hibernation during the cold season, winter season. And dew planktons which are present in the lake, ponds, etc., they will undergo the process of diapause. That means they will suspend their metabolism during this time to cope up with the stressful condition. In this way, they show different types of response towards the abiotic factors. Some of the organisms show different types of adaptations in their morphology, physiology, behavior, etc. to cope up with the changing environment in that particular stressful condition. For example, kangaroo rat which is present in the desert, uh, American desert have some capacity that it uh, can survive even it is not getting water throughout the life. It, uh, the body starts secreting the concentrated urine and the internal fat oxidation takes place and the byproduct of that oxidation is water. In this way, the kangaroo rat can survive in the scarcity of water. The plants which are living in the desert condition have a special type of features like presence of cuticle on the leaf surface or the stem, the presence of sunken stomata on the lower surface of the leaf to minimize the rate of transpiration. In case of Apuncia, we can see the uh, stem on the leaf is uh, modified into the spine to minimize the rate of transpiration and the stem becomes flattened to absorb the sunlight to uh, do the process of photosynthesis and which is also uh, having the cuticle. Then the CAM pathway is present in the plants uh, which are present in the desert condition where the stomata is closed during the daytime to minimize the rate of uh, transpiration. That is, then some other examples like Allen's rule in mammals. According to this rule, due to in the very uh, older reason, the uh, organism present at their body uh, surface 
escape heat. So to minimize the heat loss from the body surface, their ear, lip, etc. becomes very soft and to preserve the heat. Then some example like polar seeds have the blubber that is a thick layer of fat just beneath the skin which act as an insulator and prevent heat loss. Then Archibacteria are the bacteria which can live in extreme condition, very cold region, cold uh, temperature, very 0 degree centigrade, less than 0 degree or more than 50 degree centigrade. So have that type of capacity. The fish present in the Antarctic Sea can, uh, can live in very uh, cold uh, that is about uh, less than 0 degree centigrade. Then altitude sickness we can see that is nausea, fatigue, heart palpitation starts when we are moving to the high altitude place to cope up with that environment lower temperature. Then the desert lizard etc. take uh, absorb heat and bask in sun when the cold condition is there. Then some of the organisms starts burrowing and living inside the soil to uh, tolerate that high temperature. In this way we can see there are different examples of adaptations. There are so many examples in the, these are the plants which are living in the uh, that uh, desert condition. In the colder uh, plants also, which are living in the snowfall area, the leaves becomes like the spine to tolerate with that condition. So there are different types of adaptations which can, we can see in their behavior or in their physiology or morphology. This slide is showing the, some adaptive features of the organism which are living in particular environment. Here this uh, the physiological adaptive feature you say that sensitive whiskers that is for detection of the movement of their prey in dark or murky water, the organism which are living in water. Then blubber is a, a layer of fat which are present just beneath the skin and yeah, the organism which are living in the cold region. Then tears, the eye is constantly protecting uh, from salt by producing tears. Here this is the polar bear which has this small ear and tails that minimize heat loss because these are living in the colder region. So to minimize the heat loss from the body, the their uh, that uh, limb, ear, tail etc becomes uh, reduced in size and that is also known as Allen's role. In this slide we can see the kangaroo rat which is living in the desert condition and they are adapted to their harsh environment like presence of brown fur then uh, their most of water most water comes from its diet of seed then they does not sweat then large back feet to escape from predators and long tail for balancing. They also show physical as well as behavioral adaptations. Then because they are living in uh, the very harsh condition that is the scarcity of water, that is why they show the metabolism of fat in their body and that will the byproduct of that is water. Then their urine becomes concentrated to help them in adapt, to adapt in the desert condition scarcity of water. This slide is showing the adaptations of the organism uh, which are living in the very cold condition. Then like uh, polar bears dig dens to protect themselves from cold winds, they are a strong swimmer which help them with hunting and swimming through ice. So these are some behavioral adaptations. In physical adaptations they have white fur on their body then thick layer of fat under the skin that is blubber. Then its small and round ears help them to maintain body heat and not allow the heat to uh, escape in the environment that is Allen's rule. So these are some physical adaptations. Here also this, uh, this we can see here rounded shape reduced heat loss from the body, they trap heat large amount for insulation then to spread their weight on ice. This reduces the pressure and make it easier to walk on the snow. Then white color 
to um, for camouflage so that they can't be easily seen by predators like human etc so in this way these are some adaptations which is given by nature to these organisms this slide is showing different type of adaptations found in different types of plants living in different uh, condition like xerophytic adaptations are the reduced or rolled leaves then thicker waxy cuticle present on the stem as well as leaf surface to minimize water loss that is transpiration then stomata that is sunken stomata present in pits with hairs then they utilize camp physiology that is crassulation is in metabolism in which the stomata are remain closed during the day time then lower growth to ground so in this way they are showing different types of adaptations to cope up with the environment desert condition then the halophytes which are developing in the uh, so soil which are uh, high in salinity like altered flowering schedule and uh, sequestration of ions in vacuoles and partitioning of toxic ions to leaves excretion of salt through salt glands and restricting energy uh, entry of ions at roots so these are some adaptations found in the uh, plants halophytic plants then these are that adaptations found in hydrophytic uh, plants like large and thin floating leaves or elongated petioles for example water lily that uh, icornia then reduced root system aerial flowers then little or no waxy cuticle poorly developed xylem tissue then little or no lignin in vascular tissues or few sclerites or fibers so these are some uh, adaptive features found in the hydrophytic plants this slide is also showing some uh, adaptations of plants in living in different condition like here but that uh, tropical grassland or savanna shrubland biotic factors plant life they show some adaptations like waxy leaf covering to prevent water loss then seasonal leaf loss some grasses have a high silica content that makes them less appetizing to grazing herbivores then adaptation in xerophytic to dry climate they shed leaves to reduce transpiration then fleshy stems they store water and green stems they have the capacity to photosynthesize in this way they are adapting themselves towards the uh, harsh or stress uh, condition then these are the xerophytes we can see the diagram of these xerophytes living in the prolonged drought condition